Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down how to actually start investing for Canadians using Quest Trade. I'll provide a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to open a Quest Trade investing account and how to transfer money into your Quest Trade account. Investing in the stock market is easier than most people realize. You do not need a stockbroker on Wall Street and you don't have to rely on banks and their mutual funds for their expertise. Anyone can invest in the stock market by themselves and from the comfort of their own home using an online broker like Questrade. I've already talked about why I love Questrade in past videos. In fact, this video is chapter four of my Questrade guide playlist. So click the pop-up at the top right to check out those videos as well. In those videos, I've gone over the benefits of Questrade, the fees to expect, a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to buy stocks, I've talked about how to invest in the US market as a Canadian and the cheapest way to convert Canadian dollars into US dollars using Norbert's Gambit. So make sure you check those out as well. In this video, I wanna start at the very beginning, how to actually open a Questrade account. Before we get to that, I wanna give you a quick overview of why Questrade is my favorite online broker. All of the major banks, TD, Scotiabank, BMO, RBC, they all have their own versions of online brokers. And those are great platforms, but they are expensive. With those brokers, every time you buy or sell a stock or an ETF, you'll have to pay $10 in commission fees. Those fees can really add up. With Questrade, you pay half as much in commissions compared to the big banks. When you buy or sell stocks with Questrade, they'll only charge you $5 in commissions. And even better, when you buy ETFs, they'll charge you no commission at all. This makes a huge difference, especially for beginners who are just starting out with small sums of money. Questrade's commission is priced at one cent per share with a minimum of $4.95 and a maximum of $9.95 when you buy stocks. Buying ETFs is free. To simplify, if you buy 500 shares or less, you'll only pay $5. If you buy 1,000 shares or more, you'll pay $10. Between 500 and 1,000 shares, you'll probably pay around $7. For most people, you'll only ever be charged $5 commissions on stocks. It's very unusual to purchase more than 500 shares in one single trade, unless you're investing in tens of thousands of dollars at once. So for most people, it'll only cost you $5. Another huge benefit over other brokers like Wealth Simple Trade is that Quest Trade allows you to hold Canadian dollars and US dollars. With Wealthsimple, you can only hold Canadian dollars. So whenever you buy or sell a US stock, it's automatically converted back into Canadian dollars and you pay a 1.5% currency conversion fee every single time. With Questrade, your US investments remain in US dollars and your Canadian investments remain in Canadian dollars. This saves you a ton of money in the long run. And if you need to convert Canadian dollars into US dollars, you can use Norbert's Gambit with Questrade to make this conversion for free. You won't be charged a conversion fee like you would if you walked into a bank or if you used another broker like Wealthsimple. Click the pop-up at the top right to check out my step-by-step -step guide on Norbert's Gambit. It can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars in fees. I'll be making a whole video comparing Quest Trade and Wealthsimple Trade very soon, as well as a review of other brokers in Canada. So stay tuned for those. To open up a Quest Trade account, you'll need to put in at least $1,000. You're not losing this money. This $1,000 is still yours to invest in stock or ETFs, but Questrade does require a $1,000 minimum balance to open an account. The good news is that once you put in this $1,000, Questrade will never charge you a monthly fee or a maintenance fee or anything like that as long as you have at least $1,000 in your account. This is another advantage over other brokers, which do charge you an annoying monthly or quarterly fee, even if you don't make any trades or investments during that time. The last thing I wanna bring up before the tutorial is ECN fees. Sometimes when you buy stock on Questrade, instead of paying exactly $5 in commission fees, you might be charged $5.01 or $5.03. Those extra few pennies are due to ECN fees. These ECN fees come to 0.35 cents per share. They're tiny. So you'll probably never notice them unless you're buying thousands of shares at once. They'll only ever cost you a few pennies for the majority of people. So don't worry, it's still much better than paying $10 in commission fees with another broker. So that's a quick summary of why Questrade is my favorite online broker and a breakdown of its fees. Now let's jump into a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to open and fund a Questrade investing account. To open an account, click the referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. And here's how you do it. In all of my Questrade videos, I include a referral link. So to do that, scroll down to the description box, 
click show more, and you'll see the Questrade referral section where you'll find the link. So click on that link, it'll take you to the Questrade homepage and you click open an account. So now you choose which type of account to open. Here are the three main account types which are available to all Canadians, Margin, TFSA, and RRSP. The Margin account is a non-registered account, so there are no limits, but you will be taxed on all dividends and capital gains you earn in this account. The TFSA and RRSP are registered tax sheltered accounts, and I've already covered these extensively in past videos. So click the pop-up to check those out. There are also more specialized account types. So to access those, click on see more account types. And if you go to the retirement section, you can see Lyra, spousal RRSP, and a RIF. And in the education section, you can find the RESP, which I talked about in my last video. You can either open up an individual RESP or a family RESP. But in this video, I'm going to be opening up a margin account. I already have a TFSA and RRSP account, so I'll be opening up a margin account. But the same steps apply for opening any of these account types. So I click margin account, and you'll see that my referral code automatically populates. And you can see that offers me a $50 trade commission rebate. So I click on accept the terms and open now. So first step is to create a user ID. So enter your contact info, so name, email, and phone number. Enter a username and password. Enter your security questions in case you forget your password. So now you have to build your profile. It guides you through the process. So start with personal info. Here, just enter more personal information. So name, date of birth, marital status, residential address, and then move on to the employment section. Start by entering your employment status, so if you're a student, retired, employed, and if you're employed, enter your employer's contact information. Now some yes or no questions. Are you a securities dealer? Basically means are you a stockbroker or do you work for a bank as a financial planner or a financial advisor? If so, then there are some limitations. But for the vast majority of people, the answer will be no. Next, are you a major shareholder of a company? Basically means are you capable of committing insider trading? If yes, you probably aren't watching this video, so the answer is probably going to be no. And the last question is basically, do you have significant political power? The answer is probably no. Now your financials, make sure you enter everything here in Canadian dollars. So first enter your annual income, then enter your liquid assets. So that's cash, stocks, bonds, basically anything that you could sell right away. Fixed assets are things that are much more difficult to sell, so things like your house or your car. And then liabilities are the debts you own. So your mortgage, credit card debt, student loans, that kind of thing. Enter these three numbers and it will calculate your overall net worth. So now enter your citizenship information. And now for the United States, they have special rules. So you have to tell them, were you born in the US and do you live in the US? So no for both. And now enter your social insurance number or SIN. This is the most important piece of information that you have to enter. This is how the government identifies you. So make sure you enter it correctly. Finally, are you a tax resident of anywhere other than Canada or the US? Great, so now our profile is complete. Now we have to set up the account itself. Remember, the new account I'm creating is a margin account. So I click on set up the account. I have to follow these three steps. So we'll start with the account details. Do you want to trade options? I personally don't trade options, but if you select yes, in the trading platform, you'll have an extra section where you can buy or sell options. Now the purpose of the account, investing purposes, retirement, education, personal use, business purpose, set the ones appropriate. And now the initial deposit. This is how much money you're going to initially put in on day one. You have to put at least $1,000 to open an account. That's the minimum. So I'm going to put $1,000. And now consent and communication. This is where you set your preferences on how you want to receive information and materials, whether you want to receive them in physical mail format or electronic format. Uh, as well as things like voting rights, financial statements, that kind of thing. Persons with financial interest. So this is something like a spouse or someone who has interest in the account or shares the account with you. For me, it's just myself. So I select no. The agreements, make sure you read them all and accept. I won't show them in this video, so I'm just going to skip ahead. Okay, now we've answered all the questions for setting up the account. Now we just have to electronically sign the documents. So make sure you read through this document and sign where it asks you to. Next is to upload government issued photo ID. So take a picture or scan your passport or driver's license and upload that image. I've already done that. And now the final step is to fund the account. Remember, you have to put at least $1,000 to open the account. So that's how we open the account. Now we actually have to put money into it.
There are a few options to do this, but the easiest way is through online banking. I do this every time I open a new account and every time I put money into my investing accounts. This doesn't cost anything at all and it only takes one business day for the money to arrive. If you have cash in your bank's checking account, you simply transfer money into your Questrate account as if you were making a bill payment. You add Questrate as a payee, you include your Questrate account number, and you simply pay yourself into this investing account as if you were paying your phone bill or credit card bill. This is how I always do it, but remember, you have to have cash available in a checking account. If you have money tied up in investments or money in a registered tax sheltered account like a TFSA or an RRSP, this won't work. You'll have to request a transfer and I'll be making a whole video on how to do that. In this example, I have cash sitting in my checking account ready to go. So let's see how I do it. So here's where I left off. I click on the fund button and it shows me a variety of options. I'm going to choose online banking. Here they spell out the same steps that I just talked about. You log into your bank's checking account, you add a payee, you enter Questrade as the payee, and you enter your account number, and then you just send money as if you were making a bill payment. Here you can see all my Questrade accounts, including the new margin account that I just created, and I need to copy this account number. Now you can log into your bank account directly, or you can select your bank from the drop down list, so I'll choose Toronto Dominion Bank, TD Bank. It takes me right to the login page of my TD Bank account. I log in and you can see all my accounts here. You can see I have a checking account with $1,500 sitting there. I'm going to take $1,000 out of this and put it into my new Questrade account. To do that, I go to pay bills. And as you can see here, I have two payees for each of my existing Questrade accounts, my TFSA and RRSP account. So whenever I want to send money to my TFSA or RRSP account, I just make a bill payment to either one of these two payees. But to add money to my new account, I have to add a new payee. So I scroll down and click the add payee button. For the payee name, I search Questrade and I select Questrade Online Brokerage. Now I have to enter my account number. So I go back to Questrade and I copy and paste the account number of this new margin account. You can choose to give this payee a nickname. I'm going to call it non-registered so that I know it's my margin account to distinguish it from the TFSA and RRSP. That's good. So I hit next. I confirm these details, the account number, and then I click finish. Okay, so I've set up this payee. Now I want to send the initial $1,000 deposit to this new Questrade account. So I click pay this payee. So I have $1,500 in my checking account. I'm only going to send $1,000 into my Questrade non-registered or margin account. It's going to be a one-time payment and I'm going to send it today. I click next. Now let's confirm the details. I'm sending $1,000 to my Questrade non-registered account at this account number. Let's double check to make sure this account number is correct. Yes, it is. Okay, and I click finish. And here's the confirmation window. I sent $1,000 into my new Questrade margin account. Make sure you record every time you contribute money into your investing accounts, especially if it's a tax sheltered registered account like a TFSA or RSP because you have limited contribution room. You never ever want to exceed the contribution room. So make a habit of recording every single time you put money in. Let's go back to the payees. So click pay bills and scroll down and now you'll see that I have three different Questrade payee accounts the RSP, the TFSA, and the brand new non-registered or margin account that I just created. The money takes one business day to arrive in Questrade. Today is a Friday, so on Monday morning, I'll have that $1,000 sitting in my brand new margin investing account. It's now Monday morning, and now when I log into Questrade, I should see that $1,000 sitting in my new margin account. On the homepage, I see that I now have three investing accounts, including the margin account that I just created. However, I don't see any money in there. But don't worry, the homepage balances are always delayed by one day. If I click on the green trade button, you'll see that my money is there. At the top right, I can select the different account types. And now you can see I have three accounts to choose from. I'll select the margin account. As expected, I have $1,000 in cash sitting there and waiting to be invested. Now that I have $1,000 in cash, I can start buying stocks and ETFs right away. For a step-by-step -step guide on how to buy stocks and ETFs using this cash, click the pop-up at the top right to check out my previous Questrade tutorial. So there you have it. That's how you open a Questrade investing account and how to transfer money into it to start investing. Different brokers will have a very similar process, but I definitely recommend Questrade for their super low fees. Those fees can really add up over time. Again, if you want to get started with Questrade, follow the steps in the video. Click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. Plus, I'll get a small referral bonus as well, so you'll be helping to support my channel. 
Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube. And hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every Thursday. And hit the playlist buttons at the very end to watch my millennial investing guide and my Canadian tax guide videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian t-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Be sure to tune into my next video where I'll be breaking down some more of my favorite Canadian dividend stocks to hold in your TFSA or other tax sheltered accounts, especially during this market crash. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a t-shirt. Bye guys.